Hey folks, so I've made videos before talking about uh, some of the common problems with the Game Boy Advance, um, or with any Game Boy really, and how to fix them, namely the power switch. You know, what to do if you turn your Game Boy on and the power switch, or the power light is flickering red, or you know, if you hit the power switch, or you know, you knock it around a little bit, it'll reset. And I've showed before the process to fix that is to just you know, pop open the power switch and clean it. But what I haven't showed before is what to do when that doesn't work, because that unfortunately does not always work. Now it seems that, you know, I guess 99 times out of 100, that does seem to work, but you know, every now and then there's a power switch that's just a little bit too far gone, or you know, maybe the parts are broken. Um, I did a Game Boy Color a little while back and I physically broke the uh, slider off and you know, that, that shit happens too. I did end up fixing it with a 3D print and I ended up gluing it back together. But sometimes you're not that lucky. Sometimes you get it second hand and someone has already fucked it up and you're trying to work around that. Anyway, I've rambled enough. This Game Boy Color, or this Game Boy Color, yes. Uh, this console is working perfectly. Um, excuse the wrong back on this console. I'm still using my other one for uh, battery testing and I just, you know, as I explained in that video, I didn't want to have to cut up the nice back. Um, so let's take a look at one of the consoles I'm going to actually be working on tonight. Let me pop some batteries in it and take a look and see what's going on here. So in this Game Boy, if my notes are any indication, uh, I have actually tested this before and it doesn't quite work you can uh, I think if you sit here playing with it long enough it'll eventually turn on but as you can see I took those batteries right out of here they're perfectly charged there's nothing and it's not the game There's just nothing. No light, nothing on the screen. Um, I do have another one of these in case something goes wrong, but my other one does work a little bit better. This one does at least come on. I don't think I've... Uh, I don't think I tried to clean this one, though. Yeah, this one comes on. But as you can see, you know kind of flickers a little bit but just in case there's something else wrong with this one that I don't know about because the notes on it are from at least a year ago all right let's go ahead and get this torn apart I'm pretty sure I've tried cleaning this power switch before. I don't recall. There is another Game Boy that uh, I'll show in just a moment here um, that has an issue where I've tried cleaning the power switch several times and it still just flickers. And it's kind of frustrating because I did want to sell that Game Boy at some point and I just didn't feel comfortable giving someone a Game Boy that wasn't working 100% and that I couldn't fix. But Mako, you might be thinking, why not just replace the power switch? And my friend, you can do exactly that if you can find one for sale. They're not a, uh, they were stocked for quite a while. They are no longer stocked for Game Boy Advance. They used to be stocked um, yeah, I've definitely been in here. <laughs> I don't know what the hell I did, but I've been in there. S someone's been in here. No. Anyway, so we can tell, or I can tell that the issue is the power switch, because if I take my multimeter, put it on a resistance, and just see what the resistance is between these two pins, I can see that there is nothing. Absolute nothing. 
even if I press down on the power switch and, and, and slide it around, nothing. And just to make sure, there it is on continuity. If I touch these together, they'll beep. But if we look at the two pins that should be connected, nothing. It does seem to switch off, kinda. There's some resistance there. It's quite high. I don't know. Uh, I don't know how this happened. Um, maybe water damage. Maybe maybe neglect. I certainly did not help when I was in here trying to fix it, but it is what it is. So let's pop this off here because we just want the motherboard. Preheat my soldering iron because you know I'm going to need that at some point. And, uh, Actually, just as a demonstration here, I'm going to plug this screen back in. Pop a game in here. Even though you can't really see it. Okay. Uh, where's my power supply? Why would I have that handy? That would make sense, wouldn't it? So this is my new power supply. You've probably seen it in a couple videos so far. It is a Miniware MDP XP. There's two different components to it. The power supply itself, which is an MDP P905, and then the display portion, which is on the front, I think, yeah, MDP M01. But this whole unit is an MDP XP. Um, I've given my thoughts on this before in the comments, but I haven't really done anything uh, in a video. Mostly because that's, that's not really what my channel is, but people keep asking me, so here we go. That's my power supply. It's cool. I like it. There are cheaper supplies, that is for sure, um, and it definitely has a few quirks, like getting into the quick set menu is kind of a pain in the ass. We're going to be testing on 3 volts today just to make things easier, but it is, it's a good meter, or a power supply, good power supply. on there. Is it on? Yeah, it's on. So, my Game Boy switched on. It should be on right now. There should be something on the screen, but there isn't. And to prove that my issue is the power switch, I'm going to set this to amperage. Where can I leave that where you can still see the screen? There we go. And then I'm just going to bridge these two pins. And as you can see, the Game Boy boots. On 88 milliamps. You can verify that from the meter, more or less. And even though it's switched on, if I take my probe off, it switches off. That's how we know that the issue is the power switch. So, how do you fix that, Marco? How? Well, like I said, if you can find a new power switch, desolder it, replace it, do your thing, it'll work fine. Unfortunately, at this point, the only place to get power switches are to salvage from other working consoles, uh, or I guess mostly working consoles. Obviously, the only part that has to work is the power switch to salvage it, but whatever. Um, or you can get these cheap things on AliExpress. They do work, but I don't really like how they feel. We'll get more. We'll get 
I'll end up doing a video on this later. Um, first, I want to do I want I want to do the cool th new thing that I worked on. So let me get my knife. Ooh, what was that first one? Yep. I have two knives that I use for this, or just two knives in general. I try to use the same one every time I'm doing this because doing shit like this with a knife is a good way to ruin the tip. So, yes, I could just break it away, or I could just keep using the same one and not worry about ruining the tip. We're going to desolder the shielding. Probably not strictly necessary because we're getting rid of this whole switch at some point. By the way, I recently saw a a guide, if you can call it that, on how to fix these power switches. And they have you open it, which is good. But what is not good is that they have you desolder one side and then just bend the Jesus thing up. Please don't do that, guys. Don't don't bend it. Just desolder the whole thing. If you're already desoldering one side, the other side is so much easier. Um, bending these is okay sometimes, but a lot of time you bend them. They don't bend back. As you can see, I have already cleaned that and it's still not working. I have 100% no idea why. I have a theory, but either way, we're just gonna move on. I'm going to go ahead and desolder this thing. So hot air would probably work, but Whenever I do a video like this, I always try and do it the way I think most people are going to end up doing it, which is, if you don't have hot air, to desolder it with a normal soldering iron. So I'm going to tin all the pads on the back here. With some fresh solder. And then I should be able to just go over all of these at the same time, or close enough anyway, and lift it off. And look at that, no more power switch. <sighs> Let's go ahead and get this cleaned up. I did order more wick because I'm almost out. We're going to need this absolutely flat. Or close enough. Alright. So that's all nice and cleaned up. If you really wanted to at this point, you could just short pin two to one of these two common pins in the middle and then just pull your batteries whenever you're not using it. If you're desperate, I don't recommend it. It will work though. Uh, but I've got another option here. So I've got this ridiculous thing that I just made, this funny shaped PCB, and uh, well, we're gonna test it out, see how well it works. Uh, this is my first time trying this out. That is the gold knife. There's a little bit of uh, weirdness going on with that shielding, but the intention of this board is to get soldered down just like that, right there. 
and then on the bottom here we have these pads exposed to solder on a, a different power switch that we're going to use. We're going to take advantage of this little slot that's already cut in the PCB and hopefully this should work. I don't like... this looks like it's going to be a pain in the ass to get soldered down. Um, hopefully that's not the case, but that's probably what's going to happen. But what it uses, instead of these pads down here, it uses um, what these pads connect to. And I'll show you why in just a second. Let me go ahead and get these pin, uh, tinned. Some fresh solder. Come on. There we go. That'll make things so much easier. Alright. So it uses this pad right on the right of the fuse and then this pad on this big old capacitor right here. Clean this up. If in the process of doing this you lose this little resistor right here, it's no big deal whatsoever. Um, if you're replacing your power switch with my momentary power switch mod that I'm about to show you, it is bypassed and completely unnecessary. Um, if you're just opening your Game Boy Switch to clean it and you lose that, it's still not the end of the world, but you just have to be careful when you turn your Game Boy off and restart it. You have to wait a few seconds in between. You can't just like toggle it on and off, on and off. It doesn't work that way. Um, when your Game Boy is switched on, let me show you how this works here. So we're in continuity mode. The positive battery terminal is connected up to this fuse, runs through this fuse, runs through this fuse, right here to pin number two of the power switch. So when it's on, on the left hand side, pin number two is shorted to these common pads, which the two of them together are shorted together. Uh, and that is your positive voltage rail for the system. It runs like this and then up into this component right here. I forget specifically what it is. On the flip side here, um, well, this is also connected up to this capacitor, which is why I'm using that capacitor pad instead of using this thing, because it looks like it's easier to get to that. On the flip side here, pin number one connects to this resistor, and the other side of this resistor goes to ground, the system ground, so that when you switch it off, this resistor shorts the positive voltage rail of the system to ground, and the purpose of this resistor is just to drain all these capacitors. Uh, if the capacitors are not drained, the system will not start up properly. This is a almost 20 year old system at this point, so you don't really have to worry about the capacitors draining slowly. They'll drain pretty quick at this point. Trust me, it's fine. You just still have to wait a few seconds if you omit this resistor, which we will be doing shortly. All right, sorry about that tangent. Let's get on to the actual mod itself. I have this Game Boy here that I've already tested this on, and so far it works great. You might notice, look at that, there's no power switch, but I have this any key dangling off the darn thing. Let's pop some batteries in. And there's no buttons either, because I haven't actually been playing it, but if we hit this, look at that, boots right up and it plays like normal. Everything works on it. 
Um, well, except for the backlight kit. The backlight kit's kind of fucked up, but I was just using it for testing. It doesn't matter. And to turn it off, look, you click it, it doesn't do anything. But if you press and hold, for admittedly a little while, long time, I'm probably going to swap out some components to change that to much shorter, but switch it off, hold it for like four seconds, and it switches off. Bob Gianti. Switch it on again, boom. Now, like I said earlier, the problem, if you switch this off and then try switching it back on immediately, it won't come on. Now, of course, we're in a situation where the Game Boy, the capacitors are still charged, and the Game Boy is on, but it won't boot because of that charge capac capacitor issue. But also, my power switch is now toggled on, so we have to press and hold this for at least four seconds for it to turn off. And then we can wait a few seconds, and then try booting again, and it'll work just fine. Alternatively, you could just pull the batteries, and that'll take care of that. But if you can even get that far, there we go. But obviously the prob the big problem with this is this doesn't actually fit in here. Um, I know, I never intended for it to actually fit. I was just doing some testing. But I've got some new PCBs. We're ready to do the mod. Look at how much smaller the main PCB is. Boom. And I broke out the power switch to its own board and it's much more complicated looking than it actually is, trust me. This will be pretty simple. Uh, there is one extra component here, or one extra PCB. There is this alternative power switch board that I made and I want to test out. I admittedly half-assed this and have 100% no idea if it's going to work, um, but I was tired and just wanted to get the PCBs made, and I'm glad I did because had I not done that, I still wouldn't have these PCBs, and now I at least have a jumping off point to test and improve from there. Um, these PCBs are small enough that when ordering through Osh Park, they're like a dollar shipped, so. Oh no. You know, it's not, it's not too big of a deal. Um, and with PCB manufacturers, sorry, I'm rambling a lot. I'm going off on tangents. Uh, but with PCB manufacturers, when they're making PCBs like this, they're making like a whole panel of boards. And so like this will be on a panel, um, you know, kitted out like this, and then you'll have, uh, you know, bigger PCBs on it, and that'll just fit in the open space and so on and so forth. Um, so me making stuff like this is technically saving the company money because this would otherwise likely be wasted space on the panel that they're just throwing out because once you've got all the PCBs cut out of it, you know, no one's going to no one's going to make a PCB out of that much panel left except for people like me. So, anyway, tangent. Let's go ahead and get this thing built so that we can get this installed and tested and this installed and tested. Uh, where are my parts? I need to go find my parts. Don't worry, I found them. I put them away for some reason. I don't know. I knew I was making this video, and yet I put them away anyway. Anyway, so I've got the bill of materials listed on my GitHub page that I'll link to. Uh, the current version is the big one hanging off of this Game Boy here. Um, but the version I'm testing right now is in that V2.1 folder. The bill of materials is identical. Um, the only difference is this is a smaller board, and instead of having a spot for the button on the board, it just has a, a pad that you can then solder to a board like this that has its own button. Anyway, I think I did the math on there and posted it. As long as you're building more than one, like you're building three, because for instance that's how many PCBs you get, the cost per unit of one of these things ends up being, uh, what did I do, about $4.10 US. It's not as cheap as I'd hoped, but that is including the PCBs and 
the parts plus shipping if you're ordering from DigiKey, for example. But for those that don't want to go look at the repository, this is the part that is the brains behind the thing. It's a dual channel, uh, dual dual MOSFET P and N channel uh, IC here. So this is not as smart as it looks. It is basically just a P channel MOSFET and an N channel MOSFET in one package, which is nice for what we're doing because it's nice and small. And it is kind of a pain in the ass to assemble because of how small it is, but it's okay, we'll make it work. So. One thing to note with these current boards that I'm going to go ahead and fix after this video is the orientation mark did end up getting cut off. So you can see barely this little line on the silk screen, that is the orientation mark for this IC. That thing needs to go with the dot on the top left corner. I fucked that up, but it's not too big of a deal. It looked fine in renders, but unfortunately that's just what happens. Okay. I also made this thing a flex PCB. Not because it needs to be, but because it was cheap enough and I figured that would give me plenty of extra room for activities. Because yes, this is going in a Game Boy Advance, but I mean, obviously it's not going to be the only mod that goes in that Game Boy Advance. I mean, just who the hell do you think I am? There we go. I did remove some features from this board variant. Oh god. But they were features that would never be utilized in uh, in a Game Boy Advance. For example, I removed the jumper pad that uh, allows you to sec select the power on behavior. So on this version, up at the top here, there's this jumper pad. Um, by default, I believe these, these two, the middle one and the outside one, are connected. But if you scratch that and then connect the middle and the inside one, It'll change the behavior so that when you connect batteries to the thing, it just immediately powers on. Whereas in the current configuration, it will not power on and you, you still have to power it on. Alright. So, next... That was the P-Channel MOSFET. Next, we need a diode. Oh god. What did I do with... Oh. For some reason, I set those aside. Here's the diode I'm using. It is not a, um, it's not very important that you use this particular diode. It just really needs to be any diode. I just chose this one because it was um, cheap and available. That MOSFET is just about the only thing that has to be that exact part, otherwise this circuit will not work as intended. Um, other ones tend to only work at higher voltages, and the reliability drops off at the lower voltages that a Game Boy Advance works on. So in theory, this circuit should work anywhere from 2 to 8 volts. I've only really tested it from two to three and a half volts, but there you go. All right. That is kind of difficult to solder to with that via. There we go. It's much easier on an actual regular board. Maybe I should not put that via in the pad. 
I know that's normally bad practice, but for boards assembled by hand, it really doesn't make that big of a difference. I know if you're using uh, like solder paste though, and a stencil, it'll be problematic. But I'm using neither, so I'm not too concerned. All right. And that's basically it as far as the active components go. The rest are some pass. Well, I guess I guess technically these are all passives. Um, I think I don't know. Either way, three more capacitors, and then on the back we have four resistors. So first up we've got a 0.1 UF capacitor, which is C1, this is using all 0603 components for capacitors and resistors in there. I should do C3 first, because C3 is going to be harder to get at with C1 installed. So I'm going to set that aside. I wasn't thinking about that. Okay, C3 is a 1 UF capacitor, which is right here. I think I already mentioned this, but like I said, this board is so small because I wanted to um, I wanted to leave as much room for other things as possible and eventually integrate this onto this board as well. On this board, I just pinned out everything. Um, there's even two ground pads just to make my life easier. But in theory, if I just cram everything onto one board, then... Uh, even easier. What is going on here? Come on. Regular PCBs are absolutely easier to solder to compared to flex PCBs. The way they, um, well, flex and sometimes how the heat doesn't quite seem to stick around throws my groove off. So this thing is just absurdly tiny. All right, one more capacitor, and then we can move on to the resistors. Last capacitor should be this thing. That's a resistor. Last capacitor is this one, a 10 UF. Capacitor that is going to be C2. Or CC if you're watching the dub. Wait, vice versa, excuse me. Sorry, anime joke. I 
And I think that's going to end up being a little bit crooked, but that is quite all right. Nice. Now we can move on to the resistors. You know what? I'm just going to tin. Oh god. I should tape this down or something. Uh... Yeah, that'll work. I'm not even going to tape it down. I'm just going to put a piece of tape on it to give me something to handle this Jesus thing by. All right, resistor time. First up, we have a 10,000 ohm resistor, which looks to be R1. Sorry for the camera dancing around. Sorry, that's also out of focus. I should probably lock the focus on this, huh? That's better. I was very far off the pad. All right, next. We have 300K, which I will save for later. So next we have 100K, which is both R2 and R3. those down. That is also very crooked, but that is okay. Not nearly as bad as the first one. Oh man, I accidentally got solder on the ground pad. Not that I won't need to get soldered on it solder on it eventually. 
I just like only getting solder on things that I intend to get solder on. Okay. Last should be 300k, I believe. Yep. All right, we're done with this thing. Should be all good. I should clean it up now, but nah, 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 nah. All right. Bring the camera out. Bring the autofocus. So here's my big bag of switches. And I bought two well, three. Well, actually, it looks like quite a few. But some are for other projects. So I need these two. No. So this one, first up, the one that I'm most interested in, the one that I actually put effort into one of these things. This is part number that from lcsc.com. Um, I forget the manufacturer and of course it doesn't say on here, but the idea is that you can, uh, you, you get this switch and you can press it down or do this or this and it's not, not quite a rotary encoder. But this is going to go on here, or not, because I messed up my hole placing, or did I? I had to make the footprint for this, and I messed up my hole placement. Nice. Good job, Mako. Alright, so I'll have to fix that for the next revision. But this, the idea for this one, is a little bit different. Clear some of this junk out of here. This is going to go on here. It solders on using these same exact anchors. And the reason I'm using these anchors instead of the pads for the switch itself is because A, I know that at least one person who's doing this mod is because they ripped those solder pads off. But number two is because these switches that I also wanted to try out will uh, interfere. So these are momentary um, slide switches. They're basically like the exact same switch on a DS Lite, except these ones, I forget the orientation if they're on the front of the board or the back of the board. If they're on the back of the board, these are probably the exact switches. If they're on the front of the board, it's the other switches that I bought, these ones. Um, but the ones for the Game Boy Advance that I'm using in particular are these ones, part number. I'm not sure which is, but you search for one of these three, you should be able to find it from lcsc.com. But this will go on here. Of course, I get that placement right. Go figure. Got 
kind of butthurt about that. The one that I put less effort into, I got more correct. As opposed to just soldering that directly on, even because the pins do line up enough that you could do that, this would only work while you're holding it. So that's why we have this board here. You solder the switch to the board, and then you can go from there. So I'm going to start off by soldering the switch to the board. Stay. Oh my goodness. Okay, fine. That'll stay. And I'll need to do some actual testing with this. The idea is you pop this in here, pop this on here, and you would actually solder this down and not just physically rest it. And then you'd be able to take your power switch. You'd have to cut off the nubbin because we don't want the detent anymore. But you should be able to just drop that in there. And then Ah, see, it doesn't fit. It needs to be thinner. That's so, so stupidly close, though. Ah, it can work. I'll just need to figure out a different way to do it. And, of course, the placement is spot on, too. We just need a thinner PCB. Or something like a 3D printed power switch or something on this power switch to extend it down a little bit. As you can see, the uh, nubbin on the switch itself is too high, but that's because we have PCB between the power switch and the slider. Ah, oh, it's so close. That's so frustrating. Okay. Anyway, the idea with this, we'll pop this on here. I got all the rest of the pads right on, so I'm just going to cut these little nubbins off because that's easier than drilling holes. And then we'll solder this down to this. Shouldn't be too bad. It'd be much better with the nubbins, but I'll make it work. Come on. Now I need to be very extra careful for the placement. That looks right. Ooh, but it's not centered. Let me do a test of it. So that's going to end up going just about like that. Almost. Yep, needs to be centered. Absolutely needs to be centered. We do not have those kind of clearances to not have it centered. Or tolerances, I guess. Oh, that fits so much better. Okay. Send it. Hmm. 
And luckily these switches are really cheap. Oh, by the way, that bill of materials that I quoted earlier, that does not include this new, this switch and this new board. That was for the original board. These ones are going to be more expensive because there's uh, more parts. Unfortunate as it may be. Boom. There's two more pads in front that is hot. But I'm not sure it's possible to do those easily because the uh, switch has to be actuated to get to them. I would like to, but I just can't. So we're going to omit them. If nothing else, this is a prototype. So then that will go there. Oh, it doesn't fit. Oh. Because the solder takes up too much room. I was afraid of that. And I definitely don't want to omit these anchors. just take some material off. Otherwise I might end up enlarging that hole just a bit. Oh, there it goes. Nope, oh, that was the solution. That was perfect. There you go. It clears enough so that you can uh, wiggle it or push it, but not both. That's fine. Ooh, I'm excited. Then we will install this here. That'll get soldered down. And look at that. It fits right in that hole. Where's my rear casing? Oh, it's right here. That'll go like that. It actually doesn't fit. We will need to trim it just a little bit. We'll need to cut these off, but that's okay. Ooh. I'm getting excited, boys. It's almost time. And girls. Okay. I'm going to start with this top right pad because that one seems like it's going to be the, give me the most trouble. So I'm just going to take this out even. I would like for this stuff to stop moving, except when I tell it to. I need it to be at this angle. Sorry, wonderful uh, focus on the back of my hand.
Okay. That feels pretty solid. Should be good. Let's do the fuse next. There's a big old glob of solder, but it should be okay. This is going to be an even bigger glob of solder. And that's exactly how I intended it. Not quite that big. That is a little bit too big. That's better. Got a little bit more though. Okay. Boom. Here we go. Nice and solid. So there is one more pad up here, this one in the corner. Um, I included that one on a whim. I really don't think it's necessary. You can solder it if you want. It'll just provide one more point to anchor. But since you're soldering to the battery terminal itself, it's not going to be an easy pad to solder. But there you go. I'm not looking forward to removing this thing if it comes to that. But, uh, all right. So we're not quite there, but I do want to start getting ready to test this. Switches aside. Get my multimeter. Just gonna leave it off screen. You can hear it beep, right? Um. Hello. That's reassuring. What the fuck happened? This is why you always test your multimeter when you're about to do continuity tests. Because cheap junk is going to be cheap junk. Cool. So one of my probes is busted. Noise, 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 noise. I literally have a second meter at my desk though. Except this one doesn't have a beeper in it. So I'll have to leave it in frame. But it works, so it's okay. So I'm pretty sure, common and ground, nope, but T and C are the button when you press that, yep. And then T, or C and R are, nope. There we go. should be like that. Nice. So what is the point of... I, I'm glad I checked this because the data sheet didn't really make sense to me. That seemed overly confusing and uh, yeah, glad I checked it because it absolutely is pure bullshit. I could put that right there. That would tuck in nice, but then I'd have to run wires. So I have no idea where this is going to go. Let's get some wire. Is it 
glob solder. This wire. All right, I am pretty sure, where's my multimeter? That the way I have this wired, these two grounds are connected to battery minus. Yes, they are. So, we can take this thing. Tin this ground. I said, tin this ground. There we go. And, yep. We'll use blue for ground. And then, you can't stick it right here. It would be the perfect spot except that on the rear covers there is this big old post right there that goes down on the board right on that spot so we can leave it to dangle right here there's going to be a pcb screw right there but instead of using that screw we could just use that screw i think that's the best solution and we just have to wire that down and over to that Of course the wire ended up being longer than I intended, but that is quite alright. Oh, I remember why I put that second ground there. Because we wanted to make this a common ground. So if I tin these two pads here and short them, I wasn't sure if it was going to be the T or the C, so I put it in between both. Boom. Now, I can put one of these on the ground, uh, and then put that on C, and then it should, sorry you can't see it, but when I hit the button, it registers continuity. Nice. And then it should you can't really see the full meter but you can see that when I have one on ground and then the other on L and then I tilt it you can see the meter is registering continuity excellent that is precisely what I wanted and uh, we'll get to that feature later trust me it'll be good it'll be a good one Okay, Next, I've got this wonderful red wire in a completely different gauge. So that is how I roll. And, oh yeah, okay. I completely forgot how I had this wired. So I'm going to leave that right there. Right on top of that capacitor. So we can tin these. Because they all need to be wired up. To this. One. Two. And C. Why'd I put that away? Oopsie doodle. All 
right. Two goes to two. Trim this wire. Strip it. That's not enough. That's enough. We should actually try tinning it this time because I forgot last time. And then two goes to. Two Just like that. Again, this is a prototype. I am still in the prototyping phase of this project. There is clearly refinement to be done, but I'm a, uh, with how I work, I have to, I have to have it in my hands to see sometimes why an idea won't work. I know that is inefficient sometimes, a lot of times, but it's unfortunately just how my Brian works. That is a terrible solder drum. Hate it. Obviously, I should also put the pads in the same order. That would make sense. So you don't have to cross wires over. That's silly. Didn't even think about that. I made one PCB, ordered it, and then went and made the other PCB and ordered it. I didn't even think about how these two would uh, go together. one. Should I use yet another color of wire? Sure. Back to the thinner gauge stuff. This time in white. sure what that was about. Let's try tinning that. Try again. There we go. Tin these other pads while I'm here because I accidentally got solder on one and now I can't stand to look at it. And then this Cross over yet another wire. And then the smart thing to do would be to insulate this whole thing so that nothing shorts on anything else. Because 
Otherwise, I'm gonna get this all put back together, test it, it's gonna work once, and then I'm gonna like actually assemble it for real, and then it's gonna blow up, and it's gonna ruin my day. Take some captain. Just do that. Tuck that right there, more or less. And let's try it out. I forgot the LED light pipe, but that is okay, because I will be taking this thing apart again in just a moment. Uh, I'm going to put the screw in under this board because this is actually an OEM faceplate and there has never been a screw in that post, so, oh well. Doesn't matter too tremendously, but... going to trim this. I think we can just cut these flush. Oh, yes. Yes, we can. Boom. That is totally assembled, like normal. And hopefully I remembered to plug the screen in. Here goes nothing. Oh yeah. Oh. Of course, um, you can't see it because I'm completely out of frame here. But doing this does nothing. That's just kind of how it is. But if we press and hold, Yes. Oh, yes. Look at that. My Game Boy is working perfectly. No more flickering of the power LED. No, uh, well, I guess it never was flickering to begin with because it had to actually work to flicker. But, oh. Okay, let's turn it off. Because, but wait, there's more. Order now within the next 15 minutes and you'll get not just a soft latching power switch, but also brightness control for your IPS modded Game Boy. Oh yes, my friends. That is why I used a, um, a wiggly switch. That's the technical term, by the way. <laughs> All right, here's that. I'm going to have to put this back on the beautiful Game Boy, but that's okay. I'll fix it later. First things first, I have to find the Game Boy because it's right in front of me and I don't know what the hell I'm doing. But we're going to take the IPS kit that's already installed in this shell and just swap the motherboards out. And the back, I guess, because I definitely don't want to modify this OEM limited edition rear housing any more than I have to. And since this housing doesn't actually belong to this Game Boy, 
any modification that I have to do to make it work is unnecessary. Here is how we're going to get brightness control to work. I absolutely should pop this out of here for soldering, but I'm going to not do that. But what we're going to do is we're going to short select to ground with a small budge wire. A small budge wire. Let me uh, cut this off here. I'm working with a flex cable. I can't just pull wires around. We'll tin this ground pad. Tin this select pad. Grab our tweezer boys. Solder that down to ground. And then do a bendy bend. Flip that over. Solder that to select. So now, brightness control mode is always enabled, but instead of hooking these to L and R, we're going to hook those up to my new power switch. Let's go ahead and get that tinned and that tinned. And now we need more wire. I'm going to use blue. So I guess I'm going to use more wire than I need to just to ensure that there's plenty of slack. If you're not using Kynar wire, which this white wire is not, I know I do have white Kynar, but this is not my white Kynar, you do have to make sure that you tin it. You can get away with not tinning Kynar because it is silver plated, which is also why it's so expensive. Again, just to play it safe. This is for mechanical strain relief, not for shorts, but short protection is just an added bonus. Stick that on there and fold it around. Now we'll pop in my new motherboard.
One, two, and because I have three screws, that will go there. And now I just have to attach these last two wires. I don't know which is which, so I'm probably going to have to reverse them. But I remember blue was the top one, but I don't remember what the label was. I'm going to have to review this video. Side of that to that. And then we'll solder this to our and I'm so confident that I'm just turning my iron off. All this wiring going everywhere. that anymore. And unfortunately we've got to use this one. That's okay. I don't know what it is with these funny playing screws, but they just get stuck. It's really not that big of a deal, because you're usually putting the shell back on. But for when you aren't, it's kind of annoying getting them out. And as soon as I finish up my battery testing, I can put the actual proper back on this thing. But until then, this is what we got. That's not what I thought it was. That's what I was looking for. Here goes nothing. Ah, uh, ah. Uh. But wait, it gets better. No, it doesn't, because my brightness control isn't working. I'm gonna have to rethink that. Ah, uh, I was so confident. Hmm. Might have it backwards. thought T was the ground. Let's turn it off. Restart's fine. Oh, that's interesting. I don't think I've actually tested this power switch with an easy flash yet, so it looks like if you press and hold it, and then keep holding it, it flashes for a bit, it, it kind of oscillates. That's probably not good, but I don't really know what that is, so I don't know how to fix it.
It could also be just be this Game Boy because it didn't do that on the other one I was testing. Yeah. Interesting. Okay, let's fix brightness control. That's what I get. I put all the screws in. I was too cocky. with the multimeter what's going on here. That is ground. I should use the black probe for that because that will just make it more obvious what's going on, but that's okay. So that should be grounded, which means that oh, there might be well, no, I'm probably just measuring the resistance on the cable at this point. Oh no, maybe not. I don't know what that is. I thought I had it right though. I don't know why it's doing that. That's unfortunate. I definitely had the wire pinched. It is occurring to me that there could just be a problem with this backlight kit. This is not a new kit. And it is one that I got because uh, I got it for free because it was returned defective. I just don't know what was defective about it. More often than not, it's the user who's defective. Okay. So yeah, the problem might just be the backlight kit. Let's try with only one direction enabled. And of course, it's probably already at its max brightness, so doing this is doing nothing. Hmm. <sighs> the plot thickens. I don't know how to proceed. I think I may need to end this video here on a uh, disappointing note, but it's just how things go sometimes. Let me just pop this bad boy out one more time.
double check my wiring. Be careful because one of those is still connected. But we have no idea because the wires are right over the markings. The white one is left, the blue one is right. So if the blue one is not working, Blue one is right. That would be that would be increase. So I think it's just stuck in um, increase brightness mode or something like that. Let me peel that back. And let's take a look here. That should be well. That's not connected. So shoot. Okay. Solder that. So if we connect, or if we test this, this should be going to ground, and indeed it is. So that's working. The problem is just this thing. Let me. Make sure there's not just something absolutely fucking weird going on with the wire. There might have just been something absolutely fucking weird going on with the wire. Because now there's no continuity. What the fuck? What the fuck, man? I don't understand. No Nintendo. So this one is R. Looks like I had them backwards before, but that shouldn't have made any difference whatsoever. This one's L. Let's 
put those behind the board. Let's try it one more time. And if this doesn't work, then I have 100% no idea why it's working. And I'll have to try something else later. But I have places to be. So this video can only be so long today. God, it's already longer than some movies, so. Just gonna do three screws. Still nothing. I thought for sure that would work. Hmm. I'll have to play with it some more. But for now, I have to uh, have a birthday party. Not mine, but place to be. Anyway, I'll catch you all next time. Um, Thanks for watching guys, thanks for sticking with me. I know this was a super long video because I'm looking at the timer right now and it's up to an hour and 38 minutes. Um, so, sorry, I guess, I don't know. You knew how long it was before you clicked, so I'm not sorry, you only have yourself to blame. Um, but anyway, if you stuck with me this far, thanks, super cool of you. Um, Go ahead and check out the description. There is going to be a link to my GitHub repository with the files to make this thing if you want to, even though it is tested and not working. Of course, that could just be an issue on the other side of the camera here. Um, what I, That's what I'm leaning towards, at least, because this absolutely should be working. I have no idea why it's not, but the power portion of it at least works. So if you want to convert your Game Boy to a momentary power switch design, you actually have to uh, press it into the Game Boy and not just down. There we go. And shits and giggles, let's just run the test cart, make sure everything is still kosher. Should be fine, but, um, but yeah, I'll go ahead and post the link to my GitHub. It has all of the source files for the PCB and the um, components used on the PCB. I've tested this quite thoroughly so far, at least on this Game Boy with this PCB version. This is my first time trying out this PCB version, but it seems to work so far. Um, it fits significantly better than I had envisioned, than I had imagined. And uh, despite my brightness control not working, I'm still very happy with it. Um, failing brightness control, I could always hook something else up, so if you have any ideas on that, my, um, my second idea was to do digital volume control, and then we can get rid of the volume potentiometer over here and swap it out for a charge port. Thoughts? I don't know. That would be significantly more difficult than brightness control because Brightness control is literally just two wires. But, mm, I don't know. Oh, clearly this Game Boy needs volume help too. It never booted, so I never knew that there was anything wrong with that. Um, but yeah, anyway. Might as well stop rambling now. Thanks for watching, guys. Have a fantastic day. Because I couldn't bear to end on that note, I ended up doing a little bit more tinkering and I got it working. The problem was this thing. Um, so like I speculated earlier, um, this was a customer return, and I don't know if it was returned because brightness control wasn't working, but brightness control isn't working. So I got a new kit swapped in, still works fine as expected, but notice I now have brightness control. It's, it's backwards but it works.
That's the important part. So let's get the uh, get it swapped around. We'll get it reassembled, and uh, we'll be good to go. So yeah, as you can see, it's a different kit in there now. I'm using the uh, one chip, two in one kit. Uh, so this wire on the right here is supposed to be connected up to the left bumper and this wire on the left here is supposed to be connected up to the right bumper and I just had it wired up to the terminal labeled left which uh, makes sense so we want the left terminal hooked up to the right label and vice versa and I will fix the labeling on this PCB. I'm gonna make another version. Like I said, this is version 2.1 right now. Um, the version 2.2 should be completely different and should work quite a bit better. I'm gonna wrap that around that so we just don't have to deal with that. And that should be everything. So now I'm going to go ahead and put it back together. And yes, it does have touch sensors. Those are right there. So I'll, I'll show you that I'm not using the touch sensors. Even though that would be a good way to fake it, but don't, I don't need to fake it because it actually works. Oh, he mad. Okay. And instead of these rechargeable, always at 1.5 volts, I'm going to use some shitty nickel metal hydride batteries that are mostly charged. Just to Prove it works at different voltages as well. And to be fully clear, it should work with kits like this. The only reason it doesn't work with this kit is because it just doesn't work with this kit in particular. Um, this exact particular ribbon just doesn't work with brightness control. Good enough for me, but not for this kit. So. Let's pop a game in there. This is about Pokemon Sapphire with my super sweet label. And boots up. This one right here is the pallets. But I'm not going to touch any of the pallets. I'm going to have to hold the console down. You can see, it's brighter and darker. Oh, yes. So yeah, I'm going to go ahead and do one more revision to this PCB now that I know um, more or less how it fits. Um, I was kind of generous with some of my guesstimates there. Um, so there are some things that I can definitely fix. And, of course, I got the, the whole positioning wrong. So if you want to make one of these and you only see V2.1 up on my GitHub repository, hold off, please. Just trust me, V2.2 will be the way to go. Um, but by the time I get this video uploaded, I'll probably have that, that, um, that at least I'll have that uploaded, but possibly not tested. I don't know yet. I, I can't predict the future. Uh, but anyway, I'm super happy with this. 
very pleased. Um, so thanks for watching, guys. Have a good night.